CTV News at 5 with Hudson Mack. Well, on the topic of travel, you might want to watch what you say next time you're walking through an airport. The Canada Border Services Agency says it'll soon record your conversations with covert listening devices. The CBSA says airports and border crossings across Canada will be wired with high-definition cameras and with microphones that can eavesdrop on travelers' conversations. The agency has already installed some of the audio-video devices at various airports and border points. Right now it's just watching, but the CBSA says it'll start recording the conversations picked up on those parabolic mics. As part of its effort to enhance security, health and safety, civil libertarians call it an outrageous invasion of your privacy. Some frightening moments today after two divers ran into trouble off Victoria's Ogden Point. Emergency responders got the call to Dallas Road after reports of divers in distress in the water. BC Ambulance says when it arrived on the scene, two women were on the shore and appeared to be panicked. The women were taking part in a dive with two men. Paramedics say it was their first time diving. First time diving, possible panic attack. But they're both fine right now and they're just being taken to the hospital for examination. I uh, just saw a lot of confusion and, and things down in the water. They were working on one person laying down for about 10 minutes um, and, and the ambulance and police showed up. Um, and it was one woman that was basically being worked on, probably in her 50s, late 40s, early 50s probably. And she uh, looks like she was in distress with nothing. There wasn't any chest compressions or anything like that, so it didn't look like it was serious, serious. Both women were taken to the hospital as a precaution. One woman is said to have inhaled water into her lungs uh, and was conscious at the time and breathing, uh, but will be in the hospital and monitored over the next few days. Another sign of the generosity on Vancouver Island is a nonprofit group uh, puts a stop to hunger, hunger one busload at a time. You might be a little heavy. The bus got stuffed and now it's getting unstuffed. The volunteers formed a bucket brigade of sorts to help unload a double-decker bus that was filled with food delivered to the Mustard Seed Food Bank today. BC Transit and Save on Foods worked together to fill the bus to the brim last week for the Stuff the Bus campaign. Nearly 1,000 kilograms of non-perishable food items were collected. Radio listeners helped as well. Organizers say food donations are low during the summer and it couldn't have come at a better time. Yeah, shell at this time of year usually is, is pretty low, and uh, recent food drives have been not as big as they have in the past, so this is more significant probably this year than most. This year's Stuff the Bus campaign raised more than $10,000 for the food bank. The mustard seed uh, needs all of that. It serves about 7,000 people every month, among them about 1,600 children. Struck by a car in Port Alberni. The woman was hit in a crosswalk on Saturday morning. She was taken to West Coast General Hospital, suffering minor injuries, but her condition worsened. She was airlifted to Victoria General, where she has since died. Her name has not been released. RCMP have ticketed the driver for failing to yield, but they are still investigating. They do say that alcohol was not a factor. Well, they're cranking up the heat in the Harbor City right now. Firefighters are turning it up for charity. This summer, the firefighters held a red carpet event complete with a fashion show and dinner over the weekend in support of the province's Burn Foundation. It's the third year in a row that the Nanaimo Fire Department has hosted its summer heat charity. All money raised will go towards the Nanaimo Regional General Hospital to improve its care for burn victims. Important because what we're doing is we're uh, we're adding on to things that aren't normally covered under uh, under medical care. We're adding additional equipment to the hospital that they normally wouldn't be able to provide funding for, and uh, we're able to support families of burn survivors quite a bit. So this is very important to us. Well, the funding for that is uh, a tremendous thing. A lot of it money stays locally. We help uh, local burn survivors uh, uh, with, with the garments that they have to wear, the pressure garments. We also uh, assist NRGH with equipment as well as with some training for their uh, for their staff as well. Over the last two years, the summer heat campaign has helped to raise more than $70,000 for the Byrne Foundation. A group of students in Nanaimo is debuting a few important life lessons, uh, ones they have learned outside the classroom. Grade 6 and 7 students at Georgia Avenue Elementary School were showing off athletic and creative skills today. The children are celebrating after taking part in the Kids for Kids program. That's an initiative designed to help young people make positive life choices. Throughout the school year, influential role models have come into the school to teach the students skills that they can use in future years. Things like cooking and sewing and playing team sports. Organizers say it offers the students opportunities they might not otherwise get. We started in January and it's been consistently growing since then. We've been getting anywhere between 30 to 40 kids every week. We have it every Monday and each week we'll do some sort of a 
talk on say bullying or something to do around healthy choices we have different speakers come in um, We've had somebody from the Guthrie House Therapeutic Community, one of the people there, come in and talk, as one of the kids mentioned, and it seemed to really have an impact. The Kids for Kids program is a collaboration between the Social Services Ministry, School District 68, the RCMP, Vancouver Island University, and VHA, the Vancouver Island Health Authority. Well, a popular comic book character has landed in the Harbour City, uh, coming by way of outer space. He is Snoopy. And the lovable pup will spend his summer at the Nanaimo Museum to the moon. Snoopy soars with NASA is the exhibit. It shows the history of the Apollo 10 mission and Snoopy's role in the flight. The Apollo 10 landing craft and spacecraft were called Charlie Brown and Snoopy. Snoopy was kind of the safety mascot for the flight. And it turns out NASA's got quite a connection, connection with Snoopy going back over the years. They give out a silver Snoopy award and have every year since 1968 to non-military personnel that help with, with space flights and with advancement of the space program. So they've kind of had a long-standing relationship with Snoopy. The exhibit also includes a children's play space where they can dress up like an astronaut and play in Snoopy's Out of This World doghouse. And every Thursday, a rocket lab will also take place. That's where the kids can build and race their own rockets. Uh, T minus a couple of months and counting, though, the exhibit blasts off on the September Labor Day long weekend.